Welcome guys, we have a fun video for you right now. We do this maybe once a month. It's our fleet update. So uh, Case, who is behind the camera and I, are gonna show you a few vehicles we have right now and talk about what's coming up, right Case? Yeah, because there's always a lot of vehicles here at the office, things that we're making videos with and plans that we have videos that are imminent. So we wanna give you guys kind of a sneak preview as to what's coming. So right here, right now, I'm standing to one of our, the loan vehicles that we have right now at the offices, which is the brand new Toyota Crown. But it's not any Crown, right? Yeah, so this is the hybrid version, well, the hybrid max version specifically. And uh, so that means it's pretty much top of the line. Sorry, my shoes are very squeaky for some reason. Yeah, my, my boots aren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a video coming up with this. Uh, we do the roller, roller test, right? Roller test is a test of the all-wheel drive system. We try to put as many vehicles on the rollers as possible. But why do we do it? Well, we want to see how vehicles react to getting unstuck, especially because we're based here in Colorado, where you get obviously a lot of snow. Having a good all-wheel drive system is very important to us. And I actually shot the slip test on this Toyota Crown yesterday for Tommy, and it's one to watch. Yeah, we won't give everything away right away, right? So let's briefly mention the police car, right? So we do have the Dodge Charger um, that's getting a little bit more equipped. So we got the dog dishes for the front because we didn't have them at first. Exactly. We also, uh, Alex and I put the push bar on the front, which is cool. That kind of completes the look of this car from the front at least as being an ex-cop car. Yes, uh, also Alex worked on rewiring and getting um, like the, the spotlight here actually working. Yeah, which will be fun, you know, for uh, when we're using this off the street, we can kind of demonstrate some of its cop features. Yeah, and also we're working on, uh, there's a feature where you can actually get some of the headlamp or at least the LEDs to pulse yeah. Like a police car would. Yes, and I, I, I think actually Alex got that hooked up already. So we've got some of those features set up so that when we take this car to the drag strip, we have it again off the street, yeah. then you know we can, we can kind of give it the full appearance. Yeah, it's very important because we don't want to impersonate that police officer. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I also uh, polished. Not kosher. I used uh, our polisher to uh, get some of the you know, stains and some yeah. of the glue off of this car. It looks good. So it looks a little bit better. The front bumper is still a little bit um, choppy yeah. with bugs, but um, so stay tuned for more police car action. Uh, this is our, the car we bought at the police auction, basically. Uh, you know this truck, uh, Raptor R, had this for a while. Uh, we're gonna be doing another video with this truck very, very soon. So stay tuned to TFL truck as well, because we're doing kind of like a, a, the top dog off-roaders comparison. So stay tuned for that. This may be one of my favorite Jeeps we have. Yeah, this is the, just a great trail rig. Yeah, and a lot of people in the office always comment how slow this is. Yeah, it's unbelievably <laughs> slow. It's got steel bumpers on it. It's obviously got big 35 inch tires. It's got the rock sliders, the roof rack. It's heavy. But it's an AV edition JK, but I wager that a JK, especially like this, is not built for speed. It's yeah. built for comfort because it's had a really nice suspension and it's, bought, uh, and it's built for ultimate off-road performance, which is, and we have a video coming up with this one because Roman and James, our friend James, took, compared this against the Forerunner. So that amazing video, they did Redcone Pass. Um, in both vehicles, so that's coming up soon. Yeah, and it is, it's just an unbelievably capable vehicle. I mean, even any Wrangler Rubicon straight out of the box is gonna be unbelievably capable. Then you add in everything else that's fitted to that Jeep and you just get a much more capable vehicle. Yeah, we uh, actually, Alex is on the motorcycle program right now, right, as yeah. we speak? Yeah, uh, he's riding Yamaha, not this Yamaha, obviously, <laughs> because these haven't changed in a very, very long time, basically since 2001. Yeah. But right now, he's riding a Yamaha Tracer 9 GT, a new version of the Tracer, which is pretty cool because Alex used to own a Tracer. Sweet, so that's coming up on TFL Bike, so stay tuned for that. Lots of fun things. 
And now we want to show you, I guess, our selection of trucks and SUVs. Yeah, the business. This is the good stuff the right here. Business. Should we start on the end? Uh, yeah. So let me get the key out. Yeah, I have to say, I really love the way that this Tundra is spec'd. Obviously, this is a TRD Pro, but what's especially good about it is the combination of the white exterior color. And this is the first vehicle, the first Tundra I've seen with the red interior in person. And I really love the way that that looks. Yeah, actually, so we have a couple things coming up with this truck. Uh, I took this truck uh, and I towed my boat to the lake and a lot of people had to see this truck because they saw all the windows down. I had the rear window glass all pulled down all the way and they saw the red interior and everybody had to check it out. So this truck gets attention. Yeah, the red interior is a flashy option, but I'm myself a, a massive show off. Are you we, doing yard work right now? Uh, yeah, we had a windstorm last night and a few branches, thankfully nothing fell this way. Oh, yeah. Uh, but a few branches fell over there as well. So Yeah, luckily it's, it's not much underneath the tree. No, so our vehicles are very, very safe. Um, so, yeah, so stay tuned for that. This is also going to be in our Top Dog Off-Roader comparison. So this is a hybrid, of course. And really the Top Dog Tundra really right now, in my mind, yes, I know there's a capstone luxury one, but in my mind, especially with this towing package, um, it, well, I have a towing video coming up, so stay tuned on TFL truck. I tow my boat, I talk about my efficiency with this truck, and I love those amber lights, dude. Yeah. The embers and the just Toyota script. Well, and the light bar, too. Light bar. It's all pretty cool. Also this. So we have another top dog. This is the new GMC Canyon AT4X. Yeah, this is just such... A, a good looking truck, but also a really capable truck because this isn't just an appearance package, right, Andre? They've put a lot of pretty impressive hardware. Yeah, and we trucks. have another uh, vehicle. Uh, I think that's Tommy. <laughs> oh my God. Tommy is coming in and crashing our video. Oh, he's. Uh, Tommy, your, your vehicle makes a lot of good electric noises. It sure does, Andre. It makes more noise than an electric vehicle should, huh? <laughs> Oh, look at all the look at all the little Mercedes logos on your dash. So, Andre, this is the new EQE yes. 500, the yes. EQE SUV, one of the best driving cars they've driven this year, with one of the nicest interiors and one of the strangest exteriors, maybe in the industry. <laughs> well, do you want to park it over here? We're just doing a fleet update. Yeah, let's park uh, it. Up. Okay, nice. So, of course, we have a variety of vehicles. Um, well. It is strange looking on the outside. Look at those wheels. But look, it's four wheel steering. Oh yeah, look at that. Whoa, <laughs> it's really four wheel steering. Very interesting. It does seem like Mercedes has kind of figured out some of their electric oh, wait. interiors. Wait, though. it does have a little beep in reverse. You know, yeah. what is up with that? Because several manufacturers have beeps and several manufacturers of electric cars don't have beeps. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't like the beep. Do you yeah, like the beep? No, it makes it sound a little bit like an Amazon delivery van. Yeah, not, not, not that great, but there you have it. Uh, EQE, we have several reviews coming up with that vehicle. So let's continue here because the midsize truck, you know, I guess we could argue this point, whether this is one of the most capable midsize off-roaders out there, but it's really, really at the top of its game, right? Because it has a three inch lift over in Standard Canyon, has a wide stance, it's got 33s, it's got DSSV shocks, it's got dual lockers front and rear. It's kind of difficult to see the shocks, isn't it? A little bit, they're tucked in there, but yeah, I mean, all around, this is a really solidly capable truck. Plus, you know, see that? Rock sliders along the side. Yeah, and to look cap at the things interior. Off, yeah, it's a great looking truck too. I mean, those seats, I know some people are worried about them getting dirty because it's it's white on the top half, but it's worth it to me. I think they're really good looking. But at least it's on the top half and not the bottom half, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? This, uh, well, this is the, just the same old, same old, Andre. <laughs> it's this your is beast. My 94 Cummins, five speed. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same workhorse that it's always been. I took it to the dump this morning because I had some... Uh, trash that is stacked up in my backyard that I wanted to drop off and the eight-foot bed useful as always I picked up six Adirondack chairs for my backyard yesterday Whoa. fit all six Adirondack chairs in the back they don't stack together so that was pretty impressive 
Didn't you have a little bit of transmission trouble recently? Oh yeah, I is nuked that... I nuked my input shaft. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, because my com my transmission is completely stock, uh, but the truck is is fairly not stock not stock enough to yeah to shred that so input. So it makes shaft. more power than standard. Oh yeah, yeah, by a decent amount. I haven't thrown it on dyno or anything, but it'll break loose in third. And um, yeah, so that that transmission was never going to be too long for this world. How about this? So it's now working properly, right? Yeah, yeah. I shredded it on America's birthday, but I got it fixed um, less than a week later because I had a big camping trip coming up, and this is my camping rig. Well, would you be willing to compare your truck to our new 1997 Ford Power Stroke? Hell yeah, that's that's been my plan since before you guys even bought the Power Stroke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's stay tuned for that, right? So that's yeah, coming up. So a good old school truck comparison. Because we did have a comparison of our 97. OBS, old body style, Ford F-250, Power Stroke, which also has some mods, to David's 2003 Ram, uh, common rail, right? Yeah. And a lot of the you in the comments said, why are you comparing different generations, right? Yeah, it needs to be a second gen versus the OBS, and hey, here's the second gen. Also modified. Yep. The reason why my truck, my Colorado Trail Boss, has a little bit of dirt and a little bit of mud on it is because Alex and I did a comparison of Trail Boss versus Canyon 84X off-road. So that video is coming up very soon on our off-road channel, so stay tuned for that as well. Yeah, and that's kind of a cool comparison too because this, this is basically around about the least expensive off-road trim that you can get in a GM midsize, whereas that is pretty much the most expensive. Yeah, there's actually $17,000 between them. <laughs> Colorado Trail Boss to that 84X. So that's a big difference. Uh, we're kind of wrapping up our time with this Jeep. Uh, this is the Acuair full four corner air suspension JL. Yeah, which uh, you can regular. tell right now it's it's aired down in its uh, current position parked it's, here. It's stanced. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love that Be because you can also jack it up, right? Yeah. And really get it up into the air. Also, we have this, the new Nissan Armada. Um, I think it's one of the most underrated full-size SUVs in the segment. Because when you say full-size SUV, everybody thinks Tahoe, right? Yep. But the Armada, I mean, I think it has a lot of good qualities. And they, you know, updated it recently with a fresh front end that came, what, a year or a year and a half ago. And a fresh interior. And we do have a little bit of mud on it. Even though, you know what they need to do? What do they need to do? Nissan, if you're listening, they, they need Armada Pro 4X. Oh, that would be cool. And all. Because, listen to this, Tahoe Z71 is there, Yukon 84 is there, um, Expedition has their new you know, off-road version, yep. the Timberline. And so I think they should capitalize on their Pro 4X off-road nameplate right and actually create that that armada yeah i mean everybody loves rugged trims of things just look at the vehicles that are in this lot i mean that's an off-road trim that's an off-road trim that's an off-road trim <laughs> you know if they did something like that with that suv i think that would be a hit and finally um brandon has a new vehicle bought possibly the ugliest car on the planet <laughs> i know this was a pretty revolutionary design when it came out but uh, it hasn't necessarily aged that well. <laughs> it just also happens to be a 97 uh, Ford Taurus GL, and it has, look at this, it possibly could have been driven by a grandmother or a grandfather. I think it's very likely that it was driven by a grandmother based, <laughs> uh, based on the everything about it. So yeah, I guess 97 Fords are just uh, kind of uh, our thing are the latest <laughs> recently. So there you have it. This is our fleet update. Thanks for joining us. As you can tell, we have a lot happening every single week. So check us out at alltfl.com. It's one place. I just We just named a lot of different channels, right? TFL car, TFL truck, TFL bike, TFL off-road. But alltfl.com is one place you can go, get everything, all the news in one location. Yeah, good and, luck keeping up with all of it. And be happy, right? <laughs> be happy right there, all in one place. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.